As a three-time district championship champion of the Chesapeake District, 836 has become one of the premier teams of the entire Chesapeake region. Now coming to the district championships with an amazing, versatile Coral and Algae Bot, they're here to discuss their whole ground intake, uh, superstructure, and uh, wrist mechanism. This is Griffin Connor with Fun, and we're going to go behind the bumpers. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. So let's take a look at the robot. So you have an amazing ground intake here. Explain that to us. Yep, so I'm gonna pass this over to Colin so he can explain the ground intake. So this year we wanted to do a ground intake because for the first year in, at least as far as I know, the sources are undefended. So we really want to do a ground intake because if you have just a source uh, in, or a fuse station intake, you can get defended very easily. So we wanted we wanted to do a ground intake that could hand off the end effector back here. And we wanted to make sure that the coral, that the coral could be fed in any orientation. So the first thought, um, so we have these wheels down here and this is what actually holds the coral when it gets intake. So it'll go like in like that. And then this top roller right here is all about trying to get it into this orientation so it can be fed. So this, uh, the wheel, so the roller here has, it's kind of crooked like that. And that means when it's getting fed in sideways, it'll want to walk slowly this way. And then when it gets walked, this will grab it and then suck it in. And it's also kind of, it's loose. So it's not too much compression and it's not just jamming into the side of it. And then uh, for the handoff portion, we have these two adjustable hard stops because our handoff position is up here. And so this is outside the frame perimeter. So we wanted to make a, a way for it to fold in um, during, you know, during startup. And so this is how it starts up. And then once it deploys, it'll go like that. And then the hard stops are active. And since we have the hard stops, we're able to just drive this into the hard stops as hard as possible. So we get really fast handoffs. So as you can see, we slam the intake right into it and it makes a quick handoff into our end effector system, which we can talk about now. So we kind of split our elevator system into two segments. We split it into a virtual four bar and then also an elevator function itself. So the elevator is a vertical elevator attached to the virtual four bar. The four bar is how we get those extreme angles on the L4 and L3 scoring positions because they are different angles. Moving past that, we built it into the end effector, which the end effector is a complete wrist, so it's able to do 360, allowing us to be able to score on both sides of the robot if we need to. It also helps us gain this exact positioning, and it opens up the opportunity to be able to score in all the different areas while also being able to intake from the source as well. So I'm gonna pass it off to Dom so he can talk a little bit about code after he shows off some of the intake. All right, I'm gonna pass it off to Dom so he can talk a little bit about his the programming that goes into this robot. All right. Um, so when we look at the programming aspect behind all of the all of the superstructure, we have two separate like um, systems, what we like to call them, that have to work synchronized. Um, we can run into very different issues. One of which being like if our elevator is too low, it can run into the intake here. Um, so what we try to do is um, we added in a lot of different safety protocols in order to ensure that no matter what happens, the, the end effector here never runs into the intake. Because what will happen is it'll skip the chains up here at the top. Um, so in order to ensure that these safety protocols, as you saw whenever we first enabled at the beginning, the intake went out a little bit. That way then the um, whole li um, lift system can raise and go into the stow position, allowing it and then the intake came right back in order to ensure it was all done safely. Enabling, um, as you can see, uh, as you see right now, the intake can go down, but the end effect is still fine. 
Um, and as Colin loads a coral into the robot, and it comes right back on up, this stows into here. This is our stow position. Um, it has the coral pointing forward towards the intake. That way then everything's quick, ready to move around. Um, now whenever we go to score in a um, L1 position, as you can see, everything can go down. We don't have to worry about our climber here colliding with the intake at all. Um, and everything's safe. Um, and then uh, do a um, algae on L3. Um, as you can see, um, even whenever we do algae related stuff, everything won't collide with each other. Um, Uh, and one other thing that you possibly may have noticed is our different LED blink codes. Um, we have many different blink codes on the robot. Um, this here being, we are in a coral and intaking on our primary, which is our um, coral ground intake here. The flashing on this side indicates that we are scoring on the right side of the face. And switching sides indicates which side of the reef we want to score on. Switching this over here to become red now indicates that we'll be intaking on our secondary. Um, secondary intaking on coral is feeder right here. Um, and then if we switch it on over to algae, teal indicates algae. Um, red and teal indicates that we'll be doing a ground algae. Whereas if we're on green and we're on algae, we'll do a, one of the reef faces. Um, we, are, we can do all of this by using the reef deck here. Um, Using the reef deck that we have um, custom designed, we have many different buttons on the front and back in order to indicate where we'll be scoring and how we pick up. Left switch indicating coral versus algae, right switch indicating primary versus secondary, center switch here indicating net versus processor, and then the different reef posts. Um, I'm going to hand this back to Colin to wrap this up. And that's kind of our robot for this year. We decided we wanted to try and play just about every aspect of the game. Little quick thing we didn't really cover that much. We have a climb that's attached to our elevator system, so that helps us to get that deep climb every single time. And we, uh, if you guys have seen us in the matches, we've been scoring pretty consistently on all the levels, taking that algae and scoring it all the way up to the bars. All right. Well, on behalf of Fun, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day. Good luck to you guys in the rest of the competition, and we'll hope to see you deep in Elims. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.